Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Sprites of Life podcast. I'm Lucas. I'm Chris. And I'm Don. We're so glad to have you guys for another episode. Oh, my gosh. It has been been a good weekend all around this last one. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it more in a bit, but we got a pretty good suggestion for an episode. We had like plans for like an ice type episode. We'll probably do that next week, but uh, we had a really good suggestion for an episode. Um, which do you guys prefer kids or squids? Oh, I mean, I guess I, I, I kind of have to say kid because I have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> what if I told you, you didn't have to choose Nintendo put them both in the thing. Someone suggested we talk about Splatoon and I figure, why not? Because the more I looked into Splatoon, not only does it have things I love, you know, marine life and random weird biology, it has really weird lore and really weird guns. And I've never get the chance to talk about guns on a podcast. When, well, I figured this might be a good time to do it. That Actually, we should do a Borderlands episode, speaking of guns. <laughs> Oh, we do have to talk about Borderlands. Oh, the wildlife. We all, we might have to wait for the movie to drop because it might be terrible and someone needs to be able to wash that taste out of their mouth. We got to figure not, it out. It won't, be, it won't be terrible. It, it, mm, mm, I, you have not sold me on Kevin Hart as Roland. You can't. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a that's not a good. We'll see. Thing. We'll see. Anyway, we'll we'll keep it cruising for now. But we'll I'll, we'll we'll have opinions. All right. So. Um, let's go ahead and start up some science news. I figured I'd grab some uh, some marine biology news. This came out a few hours ago, actually. So there was a study that went down over at the University of Chicago that was reconstructing the megalodon spine in order to better understand how big they were. Um, sharks are made out of cartilage. Cartilage does not fossilize well, so it's not like we can just dig them up like a T-Rex. You're only finding bits and pieces. They were able to find enough of the cartilaginous vertebrae and adjust it to such a way that it kind of changes how we view the megalodon. Like people, when they think the megalodon, think massive, fat, great white shark meant for killing and death and murder. But according to this reconstruction, its body is much longer. Or to quote one of the phrases in the article, it's built more like a school bus than a. It's built more like a bus than a van. Like it's built to be a lot slimmer of a design um, for traveling um, more for ambush as opposed to heavy metal chasing that you might assume comes out of like a great white shark. And this is um, really cool, but it also brings attention to something that happens a lot more to the paleontologist. So do y'all remember Jurassic Park 3, the Spinosaurus? Yes. So that was a really cool looking dinosaur and people really loved that dinosaur. But the more research we did on them, we found out that they were a lot doofier looking. They weren't as bloodthirsty as we thought. And people got mad at scientists for like, well, hang on now. I liked it better when it was threatening. You know, the argument of I don't think feathers look that intimidating. People get actively mad at ancient studies for changing what they believe an animal used to look like. And I think that might be interesting to see what the megalodon might go through in a few years if more research like this is done. Yeah, I know um, there's, like, common theories that um, dinosaurs are often, like, made leaner, almost. It would be interesting if we had, like, an opposite scenario with, like, a shark or maybe some other, uh, like, marine creatures on down the line. Yeah, I mean, we just don't, we don't, they're extinct, and it's harder than a dinosaur because they don't have as many, they don't have any bones, technically. It's all cartilage. So it, it's very interesting to kind of, like, find enough data to show that. And then you have to go to the paleo artists and be like, hey, can you redraw this? And then you got to go to the aquariums and be like, hey, can you reshape this? Like, it's going to be a long process if they find enough data. Again, this was one study. Science teaches you, you got to do it again. You got to find more data to prove it. But it is a really interesting little tidbit. Now, do we think the sleeker design, Lucas, makes it easier or harder for Jason Statham to fight? More agile, but less tanky. So it really depends on what his tactics are. It depends. Is Jason Statham uh, gonna ha- Jason Statham is gonna have to start playing a little bit more flexibly, given that this thing is much more of an ambush predator. So it might sneak up on him a lot more, as opposed to this thing like literally bum rushing him out of nowhere. So he's gonna have to you know, really increase his uh, spatial awareness for that. I mean, don't get me wrong. If people are like, "Oh my gosh," it's still a, it's eleven meters long. It's over forty feet long shark. If you need something to be terrified of the ancient ocean, that was probably it. 
Although that being said, there were also sperm whales with super teeth literally called the Leviathan. So the ancient ocean was filled with terrifying things. And I don't know what's scarier, the idea of a Megalodon being able to sneak up on you or the fact that there was something that could sneak up on a Megalodon and it was big enough to eat it. Like there's a plenty of things that are scarifying about the ancient ocean. But uh, speaking of awesome, terrifying power, uh, Don... You had a heck of a weekend, my man. Congratulations on your place in, in the um, Charlotte Regionals. Yeah, so I got top 32 at uh, the Charlotte Regionals over the weekend, which was the largest uh, Pokemon tournament for VGC by attendance. Yeah, me and Chris were literally watching the numbers. We were literally watching her score the entire time. I <laughs> uh, know. I appreciate that, guys. That's nice. <laughs> but yeah, and, um, <laughs> I had a team that I really enjoyed. Um, it was a little off the wall. Um, we, I was the only person using snow in day two. Um, also, the only person with Articuno and Magmar. Um, and with uh, King Gambit, Landorus, I, and uh, Ogre Pond Water to kind of round it out. Um, it was like, kind of like I almost didn't go, and I had some last-minute team changes, and we realized that Magmar fixed a lot of problems, and it let us change some movesets around. And uh, yeah, the team, just, the team just played well, and like I, for the most part, am happy with my play. There were a couple matches where I definitely could have played better, but they were against very good players, so you know, it's not like... It's not like they I I could I could very easily have still lost, but I definitely there were a few times I think I could have looking back had a little bit better for showing. I just like the idea that I like the idea that Magmar can just solve so many problems. <laughs> yeah, well Magmar oh yeah, I should yes. So Magmar gets follow me for the first time in like decades, at least a decade. And uh, Magmar Magmar has previously actually top cut worlds, even. Um he's with the uh EVO light boosting your bulk. Uh, you're you're basically a fast redirect. Your Magmar's 93 speed, which is fairly fast for a, a bulky Pokemon. And uh, it's it, I thought it was gonna be really good into this tournament because the biggest physical attackers are mainly Urshifu and Magmar, especially if you Terra Grass can handle both of them. And with the uh, Flame Body ability, uh, contact moves have a 30% chance to get the user burned. And once you burn a physical attacker, they kind of just can't really do anything. So it's for that, and it's um it's really good into the the Chin Pal Dragonite Intei priority spam as well. Does Follow Me come before E Speed or after? I forget. It depends on the speed stat. So you're faster than Dragonite, um, and you're I'm faster than some Intei. Mm, okay. Um, typically I like in I was worried about Intei going into it, but Intei really fell off from the previous uh tournaments. My main my main plan was to use uh set up screens with uh, nine tails and then use Landorus eye to force the Entei out of its ground out of its uh I mean fire terra typically into some to avoid getting one shot by earth power. Mm -hmm. And then um by doing that with follow me I'm redirecting uh in to get it's, it's risking flame body burns. Yeah. And the earth what with the terra type? Uh I went I went with terra grass so I could so my my ogre upon wellspring unlike most that ran follow me I use swords dance. Um, so I didn't have a way to redirect Spore, and Amoongus is definitely on the come up. So I went with Terra Grass. It also lets you just sort of like Urshifu Water. You you can live three hits unless it's raining or it's got uh Terra Water. So um, I also wanted the Terra Grass to help deal with Urshifu Water better. Um, because like three, if if you redirect the Surging Strikes, you're mo more likely to burn the Urshifu than not burn the Urshifu. And yeah, it was um. I, there's I'm gonna do a uh, report with a friend, hopefully in the future, um, on his channel, and we'll do a, a rental code if people want to try the team out. I want to try the team out. I I, I kind of want. I mean, you saw the team. I mean, you helped me. Um, you when you dropped that um that Reggie Lecky to me, and it's like use this to kill things. And I'm like, bet. I kind of want to try Magmar on that team now. Yeah, he's he's a good. Reader. I I think um. I mean, he's got a lot of competition. The Ogre Ponds are very good. Um, we mm -hmm. also have Smeargle. We have Electabuzz. We have Amoongus. Um, but Follow Me does still redirect Grass types, which is nice. Um, and the speed, like, you, gives you a lot of opportunities to do things like Taunt. Like I said, Flame Body just really into physical attackers like Urshifu and King Gambit, which my team is not bad into Urshifu, but, like, King Gambit can be annoying. It's just a very useful Pokemon to have on the field, and it's pretty hard to put away. Uh, and again, congratulations on how far you placed. I'm glad that people. I I saw the stream. Uh, you showed me the stream clip, and I just love it. The streamers, the the announcers, just stop and gawk at your team. <laughs> that there's no higher honor. 
Yeah, yeah, it was a pretty. I said I think it was a pretty hype team. Um, it got a lot of positive reception over the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, but definitely, uh, um, if people want to check out the teams, uh, VictoryRoadVGC.com has like all of the standings. And I mean, there's other places to find them too. But um, it'll have the open team sheets for everyone's team, so you can see their their moves and items as well. Mm-hmm. Just not their uh EVs themselves. But I'll be hopefully putting out a rental code in a couple days. Yeah. I mean, there was one other thing that kind of rocked the Pokemon community in a sense. How familiar are you guys with Pal World, aka Pokemon with guns? I, oh, yeah, real quick, I before know. we get off the regional, I should also give a shout out to Wolf Glick for just winning, coming back from a break and continuing to just be one of the goats of VGC. Yeah, he slaughtered people. You just be Wolf. <laughs> I believe he that was his sixth or seventh regional. I mean, that giraffe is scary. Yeah, Fury Giraffe had a huge weekend, especially if you look at its day two usage. Um, some there's been some big shifts. Entei's fallen off very hard, especially from day one to day two. Uh, King Gambit wasn't even in the top twelve, and then it was like number seventh in day two. So Gambit's definitely had a big resurgence. Fluttermane still Fluttermane, and um, Fire Ogre Pond definitely had a jump up in usage as well as a uh, Blood Moon Ursaluna. I like the grassy. I like the double grassy glide on his team. That was a really good idea. Honestly, yeah, yeah, we saw that in some earlier format stuff with Ogre Pond Hearth Flame plus Rillaboom. Since Ogre Pond Hearth Flame, you can go pure fire, get the attack boost with your ability, and still fire off just really strong grassy glide. So we do have other news that rocked the Pokemon world. Um, how familiar are y'all with Pal World, or has this been known on the internet? Pokemon with guns. Loosely familiar. Have not played. Yeah, I watched a little bit of um just sort of gameplay footage of it and stuff and from what i heard it's it's outside of the creature part it seems it's almost more like like arc or like a survival game but with some questionable design choices some very (laughs) very uh deeply inspired designs yeah (laughs) let's just call it like it is like this is very flattering (laughs) yeah it's very flattering it's an homage (laughs) It's a parody. Like I, it, that's it's a, that's what it is. It's a parody. We're defended under parody law. Please don't sue us, Mister Nintendo. I mean, they shifted over the weekend. They topped five million sales, which is eighty six thousand copies per hour. It is one of the most concurrent one of the most concurrent games played on Steam by people. Like one point two nine million people on Steam. Like that is in the top five. For Steam plays. Like, that is insane how well they did this weekend. That's pretty stupid. They, they, they should be... I, should they be proud? I don't know. I, 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 I mean, mean... They sh- like they, they made a game that people wanted to play. That's what they set out to do, and they did it, it seems. Yeah. The guy who made it is also super into AI art and, like, AI usage. So, like... But everyone kind of ignores that because this game is, like, really fun. Like, people are really having fun with this game. Like they, I mean, it might drop off. All games drop off at some point, but I'm hoping this like snaps Nintendo awake. Like that's my dream. I don't know how feasible it is. If this game does so well, it snaps Pokemon awake and be like, "Quick, we actually have to make the game run this time." And they act. Yeah, that's that's what I want. Like the monsters were great. The story was fun. I noticed that every time you play game footage on your live streams, you can. You only show little clips, and we all know why. <laughs> because it cannot run, and it's sad. But I, I'm, I'm really surprised at how well this game did. We've all been joking about it for years since they announced it. And when it came out, they seemed to have delivered on something fun. They seemed to have delivered an experience that people loved so much that apparently they had to call an emergency meeting with the Epic Games people and be like, yo, um, there's a lot of people in here. Please help us. <laughs> Like, it, it's it's insane. Also, apparently, not as many guns as you would expect. Not for Pokemon with guns, much less. Yeah, no, no, there's other things. There's other ways you can kill. You can also capture people. In those little I saw that. I see that, yeah. Yeah, that, that's... Uh... I saw someone with, like, a traveling merchant walking through his camp, and he you know, just throws whatever their equivalent of a Pokeball is, and he just get, grab, nabs them. You can also um, butcher what you've caught. Including the people. Yep. So, I saw that. <laughs> um, yikes, dog. I don't know what demons you're fighting, but keep them away from me. That is, 
Wow, that's dark. true open world experience. Yeah, like no, we are giving you the tools. Only your your natural human cruelty will guide the way. If you want to be a monster, go right ahead. There, there's something admirable about that. Admirable? Yeah, I said it right. All right. So we'll see how far Pow World has sold after we're done with this episode. But I did want to talk Splatoon because Splatoon is wild. Like, do y'all remember when Splatoon dropped? Yeah, I just like, remember first hearing about Splatoon and thinking it was a uh, so sort of like one of those quirky Nintendo series that they make one of and then you never like get to play again, like Chibi Robo, which I really liked. I think they did make a sequel now that I say that, but. Yeah, it, it didn't, like, continue like Pikmin did or any of the other ones. Yeah, just well, kind Pikmin's of... a weird example because every game is, like, 15 years apart. <laughs> but, yeah, no, Splatoon just, I felt like it started off kind of slow and it just sort of picked up a, a good following. And now it's just a pretty strong and, like, an, an eSport in its own right, I would say. And it still is a thing. Splatoon 3 did not sell as good as Splatoon 2, but it still sold millions of copies. Like, it, it's not exactly dying. There's an entire generation of kids younger really young kids who just like that was their first fps that was their first shooter well they're, it's not an fps but like you know what i mean it's one of their first shooters like it's, it's a really like shooters it, on on nintendo i mean yeah but like not like an actual esports level shooter though like that i mean goldeneye back in n64 and all that and any any call of duty day game that tries to run on the switch breaks and dies like, that's why they don't do them. Like, the, the the Switch isn't powerful enough for them. So, Pokemon kind of wanted a piece of the shooter pie without being, you know... They, they still wanted to be Nintendo. They didn't want to be guns, bullets, and blood. So, replace bullets with ink and blood with more ink, and you get Splatoon. Yeah, but the, I do like the... Like, there's very unique mechanics within Splatoon. Like, the... Uh, I, 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 I like the sort of turf war mechanic it has. is sort of an interesting... You know, it's it's like an area control thing. I don't know. I, the 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 gimmick of Splatoon, I think, is very fun. Yeah, there's something very Nintendo about the idea of like, no, you're shooting, but kills don't get you really that many points. Splattering the ground with paint is much more valuable than killing people. When Nintendo revealed this in 2015, again, we're all saying it. Nobody predicted this. Like, poke uh, Nintendo doesn't drop new IPs every day. It's not something that they do, and it came out on the Wii U. If we're being on, it's the worst Nintendo console. And somehow this third person shooter franchise now has three games, dedicated fan base, and it's one of the only shooters ever put out. Yes, Chris, Pokemon Snap is a shooter. I agree. Yes, yes it is. It first is a person. first person shooter. Uh, moving on. Oh, but it does get its own competitive scene, like Don says too. Um uh the game lore and we'll get into it in a bit more detail is pretty wild um the long and short of it is that in the far future there are no people only squid like people and cephalopod like people and like the ocean critters have turned partially humanoid in most cases and now they spend their days either running a city or their children go out and play paint games with guns so is this just like reverse carcinization where everyone's just kind of moving, like instead of going to crab, everyone's just going to people. Yeah, instead of every instead of everything going to crab, sea critters become people. <laughs> yeah, weirdly enough, that was a theory on evolution back in the day. There are some people that theorize that all creatures were attempting to ascend as close as they could to godhood and as close as they become to God, and it was like a straight line up. Like it's a whole thing. I don't have all the notes on, but less branching out, more just all right. Everything evolves upwards all right from bug to bigger bug to bigger bug to like vertebrates and like moving upwards and that humans were just the furthest up along the rung very weird version of thinking things but that was it back in the day so yeah um people on animals are people now and it's really cool um the weapons that they use are all basically just designed to give out paint and ink and this stuff does serious damage like anyone who gets in your way it is going to get not only like beaten to a pulp, but also covered in horrifyingly, and I would assume very stinging paint. Um, the weapons they're using are like, they're really cool. Like the ideas they came up with in this game, like if you pull up the Splatoon list for weapons, they had some really cool designs. Yeah, I'm going to go get one. Okay, and I, I've heard people complain about various weapons, so like I'm sure... I know, we're gonna have an opinion about a various one here, and someone's gonna be like, "Oh, that thing's trash," or "Oh, that thing." Yeah, broke. exactly. 
yeah I, I posted it in our discord so like here are just some of like the gun ideas and the weapon ideas they have i mean like everything from what looks like a multiple flamethrowers to a mini gun like a literal bucket of paint a literal bucket of paint We'll get to more on the guns and some of the ones they tended to use, but it's a really good idea to like make all these crazy fun objects. Think of all the things in daily life that can use or shoot paint. Think of all the pressure sprayers and the brushes and the buckets and turning them into weapons was a really fun idea. Um, it's really cool too that uh, to me, the greatest achievement Splatoon had is their ecosystem of sea critters. Every one of their ocean creatures that they built, banger. The jellyfish, sea anemones, nudibranchs, isopods, horseshoe crabs, shrimps, urchins, stingrays, and like even other, even bony fish are making their way into the game. Like the animal hybrids that they made are stunning. I am haunted by the salmonids. Oh, the salmon. I, I, I got to pull up a picture of those. I guess, Sam, I, they are very I creepy. Salmonids. Yeah. Uh, I just love looking at the picture of the salmonids. These, these things are hideous little monsters. Look They're at it. Look at them. Look at him, look, look at him. Like the teeth? No. No, thank you. Honestly, they kind of remind me of like a late stage uh, when Sam and I are moving upstream to spawn and they get all all zombie mode. Oh, yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're rotting while they swim and the males get the big hook face with the teeth. Like they kind of have a uh, like a late stage spawning salmon. Wait, are you saying that all those salmon that are like jumping that bears are eating are like rotting? Yeah, so they're not really designed to live in fresh water. Their digestive system shut down, and they're just... If you look at, like, videos of salmon, like, right before the end, they're all, like, carved up and have, like, weird infections, and their, like, faces are all, like, zombied out, <laughs> I guess is a good word for it. Cause, and their, yeah, their bodies are basically just degrading. Like, at that point, all their job is to just lay eggs and die. That's real. <laughs> so they're already just I falling mean, apart. No wonder they're so ticked off in the game. Those are the guys you have to get rid of. If you look at all the characters around town, they did a really good job, like, mixing and hybridizing the human idea with, like, a lot of these animals. Um, the only thing that really holds the game back from greatness is Nintendo's firm dislike and distaste for anything online. Like, my... Like, it, it took until the third game to add a voice chat in a very limited capacity. That's what Discord's for. <laughs> Yeah, but, like, you shouldn't have to rely on Discord to, like, communicate. Look, on one hand, I get it. Any shooter is going to attract the scum of the earth on the internet. It, it, it is, it's the way things have been since Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Like, shooting games produce toxicity. It, it is what it is. But at the same time, you can't have waited this long. Like, people need to be able to communicate to shoot. But you're right. Um, people got creative. Discord was a thing, so people made chat lobbies coordinated and played with each other to the point where there were active teams, people who knew how to play the game so well that they could play against each other on a competitive level. I, I will say, one of my favorite articles from back in the day, um, people were like seeing Japanese names and then running whenever they played Splatoon. Like Japanese players couldn't play against Americans because the Americans were too scared of them. They were too good. I don't know, was there a time like that in like Pokemon where you saw a Japanese name and you ran? Not necessarily, um, not necessarily the RAM, but I will say in um, the online global challenge style tours where the it's it's best of one close team sheet just playing online. Um, since the Japanese formats are often online and best of one as well, um, the Japanese players are much more practiced in the best of one format, and they're I think they um they'll they'll use off the wall teams that are very like well designed, like they'll be very good teams, but also have a like a little just the right amount of weirdness to them. Um, and I definitely, like, when I'm playing in a global challenge, I try not to play during the peak Japanese hours since they do have much more practice with the best-of-one style formats where we do more best-of-threes over here in our in our tournaments. Well, I mean, it shows it goes to show how popular this game is that Square Enix released... Um, it's releasing Foam Star in 2024, and people got to see, see the preview, and they're like, is this just Platoon but with anime girls? And people, and they're like, no, it's its own. We're part of the same genre. We're not copying it. You know, kind of like Pal World, where it's like, yeah, this is kind of different, but we all know where you got the inspiration from. Oh, okay, it's not as aggressive as Pal World, but it does show that this, uh, this like cover your turf type shooting, does have an appeal. And if it's Square Enix is making it, I guess the appeal is largely in Japan. But still, 
this game has had an impact. Nintendo games, for all of their faults, tend to have an impact on the rest of the gaming world. I mean, look at every look at any game in an open world, and you've got a glider thanks to Breath of the Wild. Look at all of the Mar yeah, look at and all a the shoehorn crafting system. Yeah, again, they saw it. People loved it, and they. Oh, took I, it I'm, apart. I'm, I'm a crafting system hater. After a while, yeah, I don't think it needs to be in every game. Not every game does need a crafting system. I'll, I'll allow it as that. Like Fallout makes sense because it's a yeah, Fallout made sense. I don't know. I Legends of Art. I don't know. I feel like I feel like the. I'm not going to get there's, into this there's right now, room but... for it. I feel like there's it just goes like way over the top always. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Anyway. Um, the two main things I wanted to talk about today are like the inklings themselves and their biology, but we need, and I also wanted to talk about a few of their weapons, which are kind of terrifying. I also, we need to start with the lore, because if you go ahead and Google a Splatoon lore, you get directed to the Nintendo website and they have it like a page per page little storybook of the world of Splatoon. Let, let old, let Lucas tell you a story. So the world of Splatoon takes place on our world. Um, the name of the area they're in is Incadia, which is a post-apocalyptic Japan. There are many Japanese sites and areas that have been completely destroyed and annihilated, but they're still recognizable today. Um, rising sea level killed off all of the humans, and the squids and many other organisms evolved to be able to go on land and transform back into their squid-like bodies. Eventually, there was a war between the squids and the octopus people because they were fighting over resources and land space. The squids beat the octarians, which are what the octopus people are called. They get kicked out and secluded away from the Inkling cities. And after the war, they eventually find giant electric catfish to run their stuff in the cities. And all the games kind of revolve around the same idea of the octarians or another evil group comes in to try and steal their electric fish shutting off power to the city and it's your job to help fix it that is the world of platoon a global apocalypse killed all of us off the squids decided to take the land and start a war with the octopuses because why the heck not yeah well, i like why it. not <laughs> I, so it's 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 a uh, offshoot of um water world how it, close to water uh, world are we <laughs> Not it's that in the, close. At what stage the, do they start drinking their own urine? Oh. Immediately. <laughs> well, Bear Grylls, was was he alive in this universe? I mean, there is a guy who is a bear, and his name is Grizz, so maybe. Oh my god, that is Bear Grylls. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the animals decided to become people. And it's it's hysterical to me because, like, wait a minute. The sea level is rising. You have more real estate, so you evolved so you would require less real estate like like wow this ocean i'm living in is expanding time to leave it, it's very weird don't question it lucas I don't, I, I, that's kind of my whole bit i have <laughs> to question it but um as far as like the evolution goes like i said a lot of these really cool adaptations to different organisms the squids and the the inklings are fantastic i love their design i love their style i like how they made such an iconic looking character you you know the silhouette test right like yeah. for any character like they anything pass that, that yeah anything that needs to be uh that's going to be something has to be recognizable by just its silhouette and you can do that with the inklings we did that the second smash brothers rolled around like even, even if they hadn't revealed it in the first like the first trailer for the new smash brothers you could just slap that on there and people would have lost their minds because of course they would Splatoon, and people really had a connection to it. Now, as far as squid evolution, like to becoming this, the concept of super advanced squids taking over the world. Um, there was a documentary when I was a kid called "The Future Is Wild." I loved that. Yes, I loved that documentary. I remember when it was like it advertised as a special. I watched it when it first came out. It was so good, and I always remember to this day that like a millions of years in the future, after mankind has left. And we come back and look what's going on on the planet. One of the smartest species on the planet are weird squid creatures living in the trees, throwing rocks at monsters. And it's amazing. As, it, as God intended, the squids will throw the rocks. Was that the, was that the show where they were, had the, um, um, 
Oh my god, what was it? Where it's like, all, how long it would take for like the cities to fall apart? No, that's like when humans leave or something, right? Oh, that's you're right, you're right. Life after people. Life after yeah, people. life after people. Yeah. That's right. That show was basically should have been called What If the Rapture, but everyone. <laughs> yes. Not wrong. <laughs> but I mean, we're not, like when we see the idea of squids and octopuses taking over and being intelligent, we kind of can run with it because the mass public is starting to learn just how intelligent and amazing these animals are. Uh, cephalopods are known for their problem-solving skills. Octopuses have over 500 million neurons firing around their body, which is similar to something like a dog, and dogs have somewhere around 530. This doesn't mean that the, except the octopus is like just as smart as a dog or like the exact same, but it's a good indicator to how much, for lack of a better word, processing power these organisms have. It's what makes it so cool and why we are protecting them in lab conditions. You can't experiment on most cephalopods without like running a whole bunch of extra papers because we can actually determine that they feel pain. It's a, it's a weird system. Technically, if I wanted to, I could run an experiment where I just step on spiders all day and I wouldn't need that much paperwork to do it. But if you're doing anything with an octopus or like some squids or, cep or other cephalopods, you got to be real careful because, you know, we like them now. I don't know. It, it's odd. But um, the Inklings are their own strange like thing because they still hold a lot of their squid like abilities. Um, I love the um, what's well, not hair. Is it the, the tentacles that they have yeah, coming it's their, off it's them? Their little tentacles on, around their ears. Yeah. The tentacles are exactly what they should be. Arms are what octopuses have, where it's tentacles. It's a uh, suckers all the way down the arm versus the tentacle. Hey, which hey, only hey, has hey, them. hey, hey, hey. How do you make a squid laugh? Oh God. No. Tentacle? You give it ten tickles. <laughs> I was close. You you were close. Yes, give him give him points. My my dad my dad joke blood. Yeah, yeah you, you can, are the yeah, only he can, he can smell one. <laughs> <laughs> His powers grow every day. <laughs> once that once your daughter learns to comprehend, you will be far too powerful to be stopped. <laughs> I don't know. Right now all we get a lot is a v v v v v. Mm. Yeah, again, give it time. They they grow fast. Could you transfer that to like a b -b -b buddy? <laughs> that's, that's probably it. Anyway, yep. There's so if you don't know anything about squids aside from the fact that they taste good or that they're weird or, or terrifying, um, squids come packed with a lot of really cool stuff. Um, their chromatophores are some of my favorite. The 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 cells that hold all the pigments in their body. You'll see how octopuses will blend in perfectly with their surroundings. The squids can't do it the same. They can't control their texture in the same way. But they can still change colors into some truly incredible stuff. I mean, one of my favorite examples is there was a documentary on squids. And the squid was trying to both communicate to the female that he was interested and to the other males, back off or I'll rip your head off. And it was able to split its body down the middle, one side communicating its interest to the female, the other side communicating its anger towards the male. That is mind-blowing to me. Like, that. imagine doing that. Imagine being able to change different shades of color on each side of your body. Like, it was complete control. Don't get those sides mixed up. Yeah, no, I mean, they can. And th there was literally a time in a laboratory where we tried to stump the squids. Where we tried to be like, okay, let's give it a pattern it cannot mimic. We gave it a checkerboard. Do you know how the squid beat the test? It split itself black and white? No. It turned translucent. So you can yeah, just I... see through it. <laughs> it's such a troll. <laughs> it's such a... It's such a... <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's brilliant. Um, the fact that these squids come in all kinds of crazy colors is really cool to me because... In my mind, it's like, okay, they could literally just change to a blue haircut if they wanted. They could change to a green or a brown or whatever because they're squids, and squids are awesome. Um, they don't – I mean, the whole, like, shooting ink thing, I'm sure in their weird march to human progress evolution, they might have – they could have gotten a stronger ink pouch. But, like, if you ever watched a squid ink, it's more like a – I don't know. What would you call it? A sneeze? Yeah, I'd say it's less. Um, it's less of complete. It's like an, oct an octopus or like a cuttlefish. I think have like a a greater ink cloud, but a, a squid is much more agile. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, squids can shoot off like a rocket. They're jet. They so as opposed to the octopus is much better at like just moving around like over tough terrain. The squid is built to be agile. It is built to go real, real fast and turn on a dime. So that's a really cool idea to turn that into a game mechanic. Like the squids have a siphon on them similar to an octopus, but it's just way more powerful and they're so much more streamlined for going where they need to go. There is no way the human form would ever be able to catch up to a squid going at human speed. Like if you had one of those splat kids running versus the squid form, there's no chance you'd catch up to them in their own environment. They are amazingly cool creatures. So I absolutely love, love, love these squids. As far as like the octolings go, like they reduce to the DLC. Again, I didn't want to go too deep in and spoil it for anyone. I know it's a shooter game and the you know story doesn't really matter in those. But apparently this game has a deeper lore than I thought. And it's the same with like all these other sea creatures. Like, I mean, the anemone. There's an anemone character that has clownfish living amongst them. There's urchin characters with very sharp spines as hair instead. Um, there's a horseshoe crab kid, which I thought was amazing. I love horseshoe crabs so much. But once you get past the animals and all the cool stuff that they put into designing them, we got to talk about the weapons they're using because a few of them are really scary. <laughs> a few of them are terrifying. And some of um, them are paint rollers. Well, that's the thing. They, they range from pra- paint brushes and like buckets to actual military hardware used by anti-terrorism task force kind of weapons. Yeah. We we run run the gamut. Yeah, we we, in this we game. do be running that gamut. I mean, um, there's a gun called the Hero Shot. I'm going to show you guys a picture of it. Hang on here. Oh, that, so that's a P90. That, that's yeah, a that's, P90. That's, that's, that's something you find in uh, Call of Duty. Yeah, that, I that actually P- used to go. There used to be a, a laser tag place that had like gun frames that shot lasers instead. And I swear that like every round there was one like laser p90 and this one guy that was like i just remember i don't i just remember he was he was really overkill i just remember he, he had fingerless gloves on for no reason oh no. and he would sprint for the p90 every time and then just run around like he was in call of duty it's the it's, it's the it's the gloves don <laughs> yeah that's where the that's where his make... skill that's where yeah his... yeah he's got sleight of hand pro yeah <laughs> It adds a dexterity perk, allows them to reload yeah. uh, 0.5 seconds faster. <laughs> but, like, yeah, it's, it's literally just an FNP90. Um, it was created in the late 80s by FN Herstal in Belgium. Uh, the gun is very famous for its super futuristic look. Um, it's used in by multiple militaries. PMC groups around the world use it. Um, anti-terrorism task force use it. Um, it's a really interesting gun just because it looks weird. And so tons of video games use it. I'm just very shocked to see Nintendo be like, yeah, no, we'll just put it in there. They don't know what it is. Like, that is legit a P90 that was ironically repainted. <laughs> Look at it. Um, have you seen the um, – they, they have a lot of cool supers in the game. That was, like, the one gun that, like, stu- that stood out to uh, me. Give me one second. I got to go pull up the other – gun which is downright terrifying on the there it is found the name tenta missile so eventually you build up enough meter you can go ahead and use a super like so many other games um some of them are literal airstrikes um but then you have some which are just like way beyond overkill like I, you would think that like a satellite guided missile would be overkill but then you go ahead and you take a look at one of these oh that's uh that's like a sam missile <laughs> Um, it, it's related to a sense. It's called the M202 Flash. So, um, have you watched Arnold Schwarzenegger's Commando? Yes. yes. Let off some steam, Bennett. Yeah. Whenever <laughs> I'm like, you... you know what? Whenever I like come back from the grocery store and I have a lot of bags and I don't want to take one trip and I'm like strapping them all over my arms, I pretend I'm Arnold in that scene in Commando. Oh, with the log. All of his guns and, and no one does he like, he like straps on like all of his gear. Oh my god! He's like gearing up. <laughs> oh, remember I said I'd kill you last? Yeah, Bennett, you did. I lied. <laughs> that that's such a good line. Oh, good. But um, that quad rocket launcher he's using in it is an M two O two flash. So it's it's a quad rocket launcher. Weirdly enough, it wasn't meant to be like a true rocket launcher. It was meant to be a replacement to the flamethrower on account that flamethrowers are um a lot more dangerous. 
and flammable and heavy. And so these were issued during the uh, the seventies to like just deal with um you know your various flamethrower needs. Given that it's the seventies, I assume in Southeast Asia, and it it didn't get a lot of usage after a while, but it's still technically in the U.S. arsenal. This one is a little less egregious than the P90 because it's 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 a rocket launcher. For some reason, rocket launchers get a pass when it comes to like realistic weaponry. We, everyone just loves a good rocket launcher or bazooka. Now. The last weapon, and I really like this one, um, there's one called the Killer Whale. And whale is spelled W-A-I-L. Oh, uh, the Killer I Whale. Like yeah, they were clever. I mean, it's clever in two ways. Um, orcas have been known to use their echolocation ability. There's even some thoughts that they can use it to, like, stun other animals. But there are real-life weapons that function the same way the Killer Whale does. Like, there are ways to actively turn weapons into sound. Wait. One more. There are ways to turn sound into weapons. <laughs> but at the same time, like, this is a weapon that we don't just see, like, in video games or anything. This is something you see in real life. Frequency weapons in the games can, like, kill off any squid unlikely enough to get in your path and just knocks them away. Uh, in our world, we deal with this weapon, and it's used mainly to stop protesters and remove young people. Um, I found this study. Uh, Y'all remember like the mosquito app as kids where you play a sound? Yeah, yeah. And, like, there's a high pinch noise that, uh, yeah. yeah. Apparently in the UK, they tried to weaponize that against the youths. Like to chase them away at night, they would play the sounds, that frequency that targets kids in their teens. Yeah, I've heard about even certain, uh, like, um, storefronts that wouldn't want, like, you know, they're for like older clientele that didn't want just like kids hanging out would have that playing just from their speakers along with the music even. Yeah, just to irritate them. Get out of there. I mean, I don't know about you. I'd probably get out of there too because it's annoying. I mean, I'd it probably, you know, yeah, it's an awful annoying noise, but I'm probably too old now though. I'm immune. So I will go. Yeah, no, we're and... immune. We're fine. But we can go eventually be instead. Apparently it's supposed to go into people's late 20s. Like, that's the max range where, like, the, the, the idea that there's a certain frequency that our ears are, uh, when you were young, are, e are easily able to hear. And as you get older, your ears are just damaged enough over time that they lose that ability. So it's preying on the fact that your ears are healthier in order for it to work. But, of course, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. And so people have come up with really powerful sound cannons and other devices like it to like blast at protesters we're talking high frequency stuff which is meant to literally cause i mean there's risk of internal bleeding there's risk of heart palpitations there's this is a real thing like you'd think that it's like oh well it's just sound it's just a loud speaker this stuff can not only damage your ear like there's a lot of talk going on during um during a lot of the protests that occurred in 2019 and 2020 in the united states some of these were used and like people got hurt by them like this is how they dispelled crowds with, with sound weapons so it's a real thing that people were actively lose, using and it just goes to show you like how all how sound and other things can be weapons but also how much this game took from it like the idea of them i don't think they honestly took like hey look at that processing stopping sound weapon let's go ahead and put that in the video game i think that's just a cool addition like this game it seems like a shooter for babies. It seems like, uh, on the surface, it's like the kid's first shooter. But they did a really good job with it. Like, the world building, the the, the use of biology, the, the fact that they tie it into, like, real issues, like resource scarcity and climate change. I can't think of another game that has gone so direct at such a young audience. Like, not since our man Captain Planet, when he, I, I'll be honest, we probably failed him. Like, if we're being quite honest, our generation failed Captain Planet. He, but, he would probably be disappointed. Yeah, greatly. But it still goes to show you how much work can be done in such amazing, like, just such amazing gameplay put together. Admittedly, this is not going to be our longest episode going over stuff, but I did want to honor that request that we got on our Discord because this game is worth talking about. And if they ever release like a Splatoon 4 or something else cops up about it, or if someone just ever responds like, hey, talk more about the other fish peoples than the squids, I, I'd i love to. Because these this is such a cool concept. And I might have to play Splatoon. Maybe not against the Japanese, but like, you know, play it anyway. You guys have any thoughts on this? I mean, like, I, I pulled up a bunch of stuff in the ocean. 
I might have to pick up another. Um, I might have to pick up the new Splatoon or the latest one. And I, I'm sure we. I I probably said got some stuff wrong this episode. Personally, like I'm not too familiar with the game. But what I have seen, like I said, like when I I kind of wrote it off at first, and then like every gameplay clip I've seen, it just looks really fun. Like the gameplay seems pretty slick. And like I, I like the movement where you turn in like a squid and shoot through the ink and stuff. That's cool. I honestly have more experience with them in Smash Bros than I do in Splatoon. I mean, they were fun in Splatoon. They did a really good job putting that in as well. No, I was gonna say that was my my most of my interaction was with uh, Smash Bros. But I feel like I have not done enough. Uh, I have not given them enough time. Again, it's uh, again if it's not your, it's a shooter. Not everyone likes shooting games, but the fact that they did this again, a new IP from Nintendo stuck around this long. I'm looking forward to see what it can do. I mean, hopefully on the Switch 2, it'll run better and there'll be nicer things, but that's my gripe about everything on the Switch. So, oh well. Um, If you guys listening ever want to suggest us an episode, we are pretty open to most ideas. We want to talk about so many different games and obviously we'll keep talking about Pokemon 2, but we love hearing what you guys are saying. We would not have thought of talking about Splatoon if it wasn't for y'all suggesting it. So if you guys have ideas... Our Discord is down below, whether you are listening or watching this on YouTube. Join us. Have a chat. Even if you're like one of the lurkers and just want to hang out, like just drop us a comment. Of, we just want to hear from you. We love doing what we do. We love talking. We don't do this as a job. We do this because we're friends who love hanging out, and we can't wait to hear what you guys suggest for us to talk about again. So on that note, uh, Chris, Don, thanks so much for letting me ramble about squids, kids, and guns. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day or night. We'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye, everybody. Bye.